Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. It's so good for you uh, to be together. This is one of my favorite gatherings, like I said. Uh, it's one of the gatherings that we do throughout the year where it's uh, a family uh, all together. And so we've got kids, young and old, uh, all together in here. And we're going to spend some time uh, talking about the very first Christmas. And we're talking about love today. And uh, this is one of my favorite Christmas traditions. Uh, this starts off for our family uh, our entire Christmas Eve. Now, uh, after we get home, like there's, there's seafood, there's king crab legs waiting for me at home, and I can't wait to eat that tonight. And uh, we're going to wrap presents, and we're going to do all of that stuff. But this kicks off our Christmas Eve celebration as a family, and so I'm glad that uh, we get to celebrate with you. Now, I've got a special project for all of you kids in the next few minutes, um, and, and I need you guys to listen very carefully, okay? Uh, earlier today, we cut out some, some stars, and I want to go ahead and pass those stars out uh, because I'm gonna, I need the kids to listen very carefully because if you listen very carefully, I'm going to give you a treat in just a few minutes. And this is how well, I'm going to know that you're listening very carefully, okay? You are getting a star, and every time that in my talk that you hear the name Jesus, I want you to raise your star up uh, in the sky, all right? Just ra- lift your arm up with your star because Jesus is the star of Christmas, all right? So uh, everybody, kids, everybody got your star? Adults, you might need to help them along the way. All right, let's just help. Have, uh, let's have a practice, all right? Jesus, there you go, Jesus is the star of Christmas. Christmas is all about Jesus. All right, lift it up whenever you hear the word Jesus. And I know that we have some fun things that we get to do and some presents that we get to open, and all those things are great, but Jesus is the most important. Can I have a star? All right. Jesus is the most important. All right, Christmas is a love story. Uh, The story of Christmas is the story of all the love that Jesus has for you. How do you know if someone loves you? For adults, this can be an especially tricky question, right? So no matter how many apps or dating services uh, that we have, they still don't help us know if someone loves us. So, so parents might worry about it if there are enough gifts, and, and maybe that's an indication of our love and how we love our kids. Friends might, might be worried about getting the right gift, you know, maybe getting the right gift from another friend or, or giving the right gift so that, so that they feel uh, the appropriate amount of love. Spouses, boyfriends, girlfriends uh, could worry about making sure that their special person really knows that they love them. And we all know that that strange pressure that we might feel about making sure that we have equal gifts, you know, because what if, what if you get something really expensive, but I only got you something that I thought was really funny? That's a disaster. And there's just like this tension in us uh, from that. What if if they don't love you uh, as much as you love them? And and all the gift giving and this love comparison can start to take the joy out of giving gifts. When gifts really don't tell us whether someone loves us or uh, or not. That's not how you know if someone loves you. So how do you know if someone loves you? And maybe the bigger, the bigger question on Christmas Eve is how do you know if Jesus loves you? Oh, good. I saw some of you. You caught me. All right, good. Jesus loves you. When someone loves you, they want to be with you. And that's why Christmas is a love story. That's why the story of Christmas is the story of all the love that Jesus has for you. On Christmas, we celebrate that Jesus loves us. And I want to read a portion of the Bible that talks about Jesus' birth. It's found in Matthew chapter 1. And Matthew wrote about Jesus' life so that you and I could know who Jesus was. There's a lot of Jesus in this talk and what he has done. And this is what it says in Matthew chapter 1, verse 20. It says, Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, 
for he will save his people from their sins. And all of this occurred to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Jesus actually had a bunch of different names that he could be called. And they all tell us something about uh, who Jesus is and what he does. So, so the name Jesus means the Lord saves. And it reminds us that Jesus saves us from our sins. One of Jesus' other names is Christ. That's not actually his last name. That's not how it works. It's just a, it's another name. It's another title. Uh, it's another name that Jesus is called. And, and it's to tell us that he has been given power and authority by God. And at Christmas, we're reminded that Jesus is called Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, and Everlasting Father. And tonight, I want us to remember that Jesus loves us. And we know he loves us. Because one of Jesus' names is Emmanuel. Now, I, I care about the meaning of names. Uh, now, I'm not a big fan of the meaning of my name, Jacob. Uh, it means supplanter uh, because he was always stealing uh, from his older brother. Not a great meaning. Uh, uh, so, you know, I've wrestled with that. I've got over it. Uh, but, but I love my kids' names. And Janelle and I thought long and hard about what we were going to name our kids. And so uh, Chloe is Chloe Evangeline. Uh, Chloe means life and Evangeline means good news. And Lucas Edward means bright and rich. And we're working on names for our little girl on the way here in February that will be meaningful. And names in Bible times were also really important. So it's not by accident that one of Jesus' names is Emmanuel. Because God wants us to pay attention to what that name means. And it means God is with us. When you love someone, you want to be with them. And Jesus wants to be with us. And the beauty of Christmas is that God shows us how much He loves us because Jesus leaves the beauty and splendor and glory of heaven to be born as a baby in a manger. Jesus chooses to be with us in the most crazy, beautiful way that nobody really ever imagined until that moment. Jesus, who is God, chose to be with us by becoming like us. Now, sure, there were stories of God's living among people. And yeah, there were stories of God's pretending to be people. But this was the first time that God became like people. Also, that Jesus could be with us because Jesus loves us. You know, it's easy to be with someone when they're rich or famous or popular. It's easy to be with someone if you might get something from that some of, someone. Some of you uh, probably know that I'm a pretty big Cubs fan. And the Cubs third baseman, Chris Bryant, lives right here in Las Vegas. And the other night, Janelle told me that the Bryants, Chris and his wife, had a game night with Bryce Harper and his wife. Now, Bryce is the right fielder of the Washington Nationals. Now, I like baseball, and I love games. I'm really good at games, and I think I'm a pretty fun guy. But somehow, my invitation to that game night must have been lost along the way. You see, there's a lot of upside for me to be with them. Not so much upside for them to be with me. There's a lot of upside for you and I to be with Jesus. But I, I don't know if there's a lot of upside for Jesus to be with us. That's because it, it, it's not about getting something, it's about love. There's a modern parable that I like, and it goes like this. This guy's walking down the street, and he falls in a hole. And the walls are so steep that he can't get out. And a doctor passes by, and so the guy shouts out, Hey, you! Hey, you! Can you help me out? And the doctor writes a prescription and throws it down in the hole and moves on. 
And then a priest comes along, and the guy shouts out, Father, I'm down in this hole. Can you help me out? And the priest writes out a prayer, throws it down in the hole, and, and moves on. Then a friend walks by. Hey, Joe, Joe, it's, it's me. Can you help me out? And the friend jumps in the hole. And our guy says, are you stupid? Now we're both down here. And the friend says, yeah, but I've been down here before, and I know the way out. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with us. But our world has this sin problem, has a sin hole. It is why we see sickness and shame and wrong and evil and brokenness around us. It's why we do the things that we don't want to do or, or, or know that we shouldn't do. And it would have been easy for God to write us off and to leave us in our own mess. But that's not what He's done. Instead, He's chosen to be with us. Even in our hole. Our deepest, darkest holes. Jesus is Emmanuel. Jesus is with us. Jesus is with you. And this Christmas, I want you to know Jesus loves you. How do I know? Because he, because he came to be with us. And the wonderful thing about Christmas is that we remember and celebrate that Jesus came. And we also look forward to when Jesus will come again. Because Jesus wants to be with us. He wants to be with us forever. I bring you good news of great joy to all people. God is with us because God loves us. Merry Christmas.